to the Covenant Eyes podcast. We are so glad to have you here with us again for another exciting episode. We have got one of our longtime friends joining us today, and I'm super excited. But before we get into all that, I do want to just take a minute to remind our listeners to be sure to leave us a review, send us your feedback, and make sure you share the podcast far and wide. We love to hear from you. So make sure you send us anything you've got to say. We want to hear from you. We love hearing from you. And uh, with that, I'm Karen Potter. He's Rob hey. Stoddard. <laughs> hey, <Right>. Rob. <laughs> hey, Karen. Are, are you Rob? Rob Stoddard? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to be here. And uh, we have a really great show today. And uh, our guest is, is awesome. So I want to start with that. Jonathan Doherty, he's the founder and president of Be Broken Ministries. Um, he's also the founder of Gateway to Freedom. It's a three-day workshop for men. But he also hosts a, a weekly radio show, Pure Sex Radio. Um, he's really been in demand on a, as a national speaker uh, on, on sexual integrity and, and men's issues. And uh, just an all-around great guy. So Jonathan, welcome uh, and thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you guys. It's always a pleasure to be with you, and I'm I'm really looking forward to the conversation. Right, right. Well, Jonathan, could you start out just really kind of giving us some background? I've heard your testimony. Um, you certainly don't need to go into that, you know, unless you really want to. But uh, that testimony is awesome, and it's really it led to God using you to start Be Broken Ministry. Could you give us just a little background um, in really what Be Broken Ministry is all about? Sure. The The really short version is that I got introduced to porn when I was a uh, a 12 year old. That led to the next 13 years of my life turning into a full blown sex addict. Um, and then basically in 1999 was when I uh, came to the end of that journey as uh, because I was finally broken. Um, over that. And so therefore my recovery started at that point. And about four years after that, God called me into this as a vocation by basically giving me three little words. He said, tell your story. And so that's really what I've been doing for the last 20 years um, is telling my story in hopes of building a bridge and the foundation for all of it. And this is one of our, the favorite topic that we love to talk about in our ministry is grace. Um, you know, I had, I had actually grown up in the church, so I had a lot of understanding of grace and truth and, and all of this, but I was building a double life, which was making it very difficult for me to really experience the grace of God in a transformational way. And so when I finally got into recovery and understood what it meant to actually walk in the light, <laughs> Um, when we finally started the ministry, grace had to be the foundation of everything. And so when we, the the ministry name, Be Broken, often confuses a lot of people because they're like, wait a second, don't you mean be fixed or be well or be good? Or, you know, it's like, what do you mean be broken? But when we talk about grace, one of the things that I had to learn personally and what we try to teach people in our ministry is that in order for you to experience the transformational power of grace, there is a sense in which we've got to bring our brokenness, but also we've got to remain in a state of brokenness. Like there's a humility that's necessary, and that's kind of what walking in the light is. And so that's a lot of what our ministry is about, is helping people engage that in an authentic and genuine way in communities that we call grace-based. They're grace-based communities. That's awesome. And I see that throughout your core values as an organization as well. You really talk about the grace-based and the humbleness and generosity and inclusiveness and being kind. That's just part of the core foundations of your organization, your ministry. So it's fabulous. Now with that grace-based um, approach, you yourself have just released a new book centered around that topic as well. Do you want to tell our audience a little bit about that new book? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the title of it is Grace-Based Transformation, The Three-Stage Journey to Wholeness in Christ. And I joke about how it only took me 20 years to finally write the book that I really wanted to write all along. Uh, but I think it took 20 years to like kind of have all of those things, those experiences that sort of build on one another to where it's kind of like, okay, this has been the overarching way that we have been doing ministry for 20 years is trying to lead people on this three-stage journey to wholeness in Christ, which is heal, grow, share. And we believe that's the basic, it's so simple, but it's like, 
It's a very basic thing of what real life transformation looks like. And it's not even just applied to, let's say, addiction or sexual brokenness or anything. It's really kind of like the Christian journey. There's healing that needs to go on in our lives. We need to understand who we are in Christ. There's growth that happens in the grace and truth. And ultimately, we are meant to share, share our stories, share the good news of Jesus. And um, that's kind of that kind of overlays on every other program that we have in our ministry. So whether it's our wives care ministry, helping women deal with betrayal trauma, or our men's ministry where guys are trying to break free from unwanted sexual behaviors, or even our family care ministry that is helping parents raise their children up to understand God's design and live into it. Heal, grow, share is still the is still the the pathway, the transformation pathway that we teach to people. And it's all under it's all undergirded by grace. In any one of those stages, uh, the transformation that's going to happen in our lives is not through more of our effort or through more of our performance. It's going to come because of the kindness of God that He's been gracious towards us. Oh, that's that is so key and so important. Um, that book you recently uh, contributed a resource to our Victory app, and for those listeners who don't know what the Victory app, our Victory app is a free app um, for both uh, members of Covenant Eyes, but also general public. Uh, just full of content, uh, resources for men, for women, families, allies of of strugglers, and in that you wrote a resource called um, uh, Just Grace-Based Recovery and to kind of go through why grace is so needed and so important in our recovery journey. You kind of just give us an overview. Why why is grace so important when somebody is going through a recovery stage? Well, I think uh, the, the general uh, kind of normal reaction when somebody realizes, okay, I have a problem that is outside of my control, meaning I just keep going back and doing the same things over and over again, even though I've tried to stop, that's the definition of addiction, um, is so many times the thought is, if I'm going to enter into recovery, the basis of whether or not I'm going to get well or not is going to be all about my performance. And so we kind of we kind of show the difference between performance a performance-based approach versus a grace-based approach. And a performance-based approach is essentially going to say, my worth and my value as a human being, as it pertains to my recovery, is based on how well I perform. So if I come in today and I say, hey, last week, um, I, I did terrible. I mean, I just bombed out all the time. I was looking at pornography. I was doing all these terrible things. Then I'm assuming because I performed poorly, therefore my value as a human being has gone down. But conversely, if I come in and I say, hey, I did great. I didn't look at anything that I wasn't supposed to look at. We actually think that our value can go up. And what grace does is it says, no, your value before God is a constant. You are made in God's image. You have intrinsic worth and value because of that. And therefore, the reason that you can do all the hard work of recovery is not because you're trying to earn anything but you're trying to live into what is already true about you, that you are a valued, beloved image bearer of God. And I think it changes that that foundationally changes the entire dynamic of how people engage recovery. Now, one of the things I like to say in that is the old Dallas Willard quote that says, grace is not opposed to effort, but it's opposed to earning. And so we don't say that grace a grace-based approach means there's going to be no effort on your part. Just sit cross-legged and hum in the right key, and somehow everything will just magically transform. It's like, no, there's a lot of effort, but you need to understand that that effort doesn't do anything to change your value and your worth. It doesn't change your identity as one who is beloved and made in God's image. That's the key that we see in between the grace-based approach versus a performance-based approach. I love how you put that too. I'm reading a book, uh, it's called The Cost of Discipleship and uh, it's by um, Bonhoeffer. And he talks about grace a lot in that book. And, you know, like he mentions, I'm going to just kind of read it. He reads or he writes, cheap grace is the deadly enemy of our church because that that grace you were talking about where we just sit and cross our legs and hum to the tune, like, no, I mean, there is 
there is some role that we have to play in that, but we can't earn grace. Like God gives that to us freely, but we do have work that we have to do, but you can't earn it. Like you're not going to get a gold star at the end of the day for anything that you put into it. But I just love that grace-based model because um, it's something I think often as Christians, we forget that like grace is something that we don't deserve and we can't earn it. Like God just freely gives it to us. And it is such a beautiful and treasured gift that he gives to us. And I think it's important to keep that front and center. Yeah. I think one of the things, you know, I, I've heard people that have, have sometimes misinterpreted what Bonhoeffer meant by that cheap grace, because they'll just throw that term around cheap grace, cheap grace, cheap grace. Yeah. And sometimes it can get misinterpreted to where I like to tell people, okay, listen, grace actually isn't cheap. It's free. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> and it's totally free. Now, what you have to realize that, and, and what I think Bonhoeffer was getting at in the cost of discipleship there was saying, listen, the cost of discipleship is not about cheap or expensive or anything like that. It's about realizing that when we understand the free grace of God, I actually believe our response to that is we become the hardest working saints in God's kingdom. Yes. But it's not because we are looking to earn anything. It's because I think we're actually getting a deeper understanding of just how free grace is to us and how much it cost Christ that we do receive it freely. And I think when all of that starts to click, then, I mean, I've seen it happen to so many men over the years where finally when they start to understand you mean that my value, my worth, the love of God is a free gift to me, the forgiveness of my sins, my salvation is totally free. It's like when the lights come on, there not only does the recovery accelerate, but their effort increases. They become hardworking saints. Um, and I think it's because you have the right understanding of grace, because you're not earning anything. Nope. That's so good. <laughs> so true. So true. You know, in in the uh, in the resource on our victory app, one of the things that really stood out to me was uh, when you talk about uh, grace and forgiveness, or grace to forgive. That just seems in the recovery uh, aspect. That seems like such an important piece because you know we both we have both people who have wronged us, and maybe from our past or as we were a child that maybe led to some of the things that happened to us in our lives. And we hold that anger sometimes of, of people who've wronged us in the past, but then there's also that ability to forgive ourselves or know we're forgiven um, by Christ. And so can you talk a little bit about that? Just that, that need to, to forgive or that grace to forgive others and ourselves uh, as we go through recovery. Absolutely. I think this is one of the, sometimes it often becomes one of the hardest hurdles for people to get over, not only in their own personal recovery, but also for those that they've wounded because of their addiction or whatever their acting out behaviors are. And, um, and yet, for those of us who understand the gospel, we know that there's no such thing as freedom apart from forgiveness. There's really no such thing as reconciliation or healing or restoration apart from forgiveness. It is an, it's a non-optional part of the process of healing and freedom and joy and peace and all those kinds of things. And so if, but here's the thing, if we're trying to uh, earn that or trying to perform in such a way, that's another one of those things where if you recognize, if you understand the definition of forgiveness, it is not something that can be deserved. In other words, did God forgive us because we deserved it? No, it's like, wow, we were still enemies. Christ died for us. So there's a sense in which even forgiveness has to be a gracious act. And so there's a sense in which I'm going to do something for you that you don't deserve, that you can't earn, and I'm giving it to you as a gift. And I think that's why we have to understand first the grace that we have been given. Because I think, you know, even that, um, you know, Rob, I, I've I've said it for many years myself, too, the idea of, oh, forgiving myself. And I've realized, you know, it's a little bit of a misnomer because I don't actually have the ability in myself to forgive myself. But I understand everybody, I think, understands what we mean by that. There has to be a point at which we come into agreement with the forgiveness that God has given us and say, I can see myself now the same way that God sees me. And in that way, I'm forgiving myself because I'm finally not holding those things over me 
that God has said he's released me from because of forgiveness. And in the same way, those that we've wounded, it takes grace for us to be, and humility for us to be able to go and, and admit and say, I was wrong. Now, we can't force anybody to offer that forgiveness to us, but we can, by understanding the grace that we've been given, recognize in a new way just how much our own sin has hurt other people. And therefore, understanding the grace that God's given us allows us to go seek forgiveness, but also to be able to offer forgiveness as well. Mm, I know our audience is definitely someone out there is like receiving that message right now. I think that's probably one of the hardest things for new Christians. I remember early in my walk, you know, accepting that grace for what it is, because forgiving like forgiving myself of my, you know, bad deeds and all the horrible things that sins against God. That was so hard for me. But then I was like, wait, he's already forgiven me. I remember my mentor telling me like, you are forgiven. You have to just, you know, you have to accept the gift that has been given to you. Like it is there for you and he loves you. So I think that's great. Um, Jonathan, your group, Be Broken Ministries, has so many different facets and so many different things that um, our listeners might be interested in. I know you guys offer groups. Um, you work with churches. Can you talk a little bit about some of the different ways that our listeners might be able to engage with your ministry or seek help from your ministry as they're working on their own recovery path? Yeah, I'd love to. We kind of have four major sort of lanes that we operate in. We have our men's ministry. And our primary resource there is our Gateway to Freedom three-day intensive for men. That's kind of our flagship resources. We do have a lot of other stuff, that's whether it's online or in person. Um, we also have our Wives Care Ministry, which helps women who are healing from betrayal trauma. Um, and most of that happens through online groups. And then we have our Family Care Ministry, which has a lot of great resources, online courses. A lot of that ministry is more about preparation or prevention and education rather than necessarily responding to existing problems. So we're trying to get upstream with our family care ministry and say, hey, how can we start raising the next generation in the nurture and admonition of the Lord and understanding God's design for sex? And then finally, we have our kind of our leadership lane, which is helping churches, local churches, to be able to say, we want to both be able to address the problems that currently exist in our church and how can we get resources to do that, I um, mean, we use our vast network of resources because it's not just all our stuff. We, I mean, we've been doing this for 20 years. So we know a lot of people, including Covenant Eyes and other ministries that do similar kind of work. But then we also want to help churches be able to say, how can we better educate and train up and disciple our people on God's design for sex? Again, so that it's not just about responding to problems, but actually trying to take ground and be more proactive. Oh, those are wonderful ministries and, and so needed every every piece of that. So if our listeners want to find out how to how to find these ministries and how to connect with you, and you do have some um in-person intensive as well as online, correct? Mm -hmm. How do our how do our listeners find these resources and get in contact with you? Yeah, everything that I just mentioned can be found on our website at bebroken.org. Um, all of that, just bebroken.org. You can get to all of our resources, our podcast, our store, just everything that I just mentioned, you can get access there. Awesome. And where do they get their hands on your new book? I know that came out recently. So how do they order a copy for themselves? Easiest thing to do is just go to Amazon and either okay. search for my name or just search for Grace Based Transformation and it'll come up. Perfect. And we'll be sure to put links in our show notes for all of our listeners so that you can easily find all of these great resources. Jonathan, as we bring this episode to a close today, what are some key takeaways that you want our audience really to understand as we wrap things up today about Be Broken Ministries and about grace? Yeah, I think the, the key thing that I would want a person to, to walk away with today is that God actually does love you that there's absolutely nothing that you have ever done or ever could do that would cause him to love you less because he declared the fullness of his love on the cross. So if you're ever doubting how much you are worth, look to the cross and that will tell you how much you're worth to God. You're worth the life of his only son. And that is a value that can't change. And you didn't have to do anything to earn that. You, just, you are loved because you exist, not because you've done anything. And so I just would want people to walk away with that. And so wherever you maybe have have failed in managing your sexuality, maybe you're struggling with pornography or whatever else it is, um, 
I believe that grace is the answer to freeing you, not only from whatever those behaviors are, but freeing you from the shame that has been associated with those behaviors, because God has given you a worth and a value um, that is beyond anything that you've done. And so I just would encourage people to to be stewing on that as they spend the rest of their day. Excellent. And I know so many people out there, us included, really need to hear that message in just that simple truth that that can set people free. So Jonathan, thank you for joining us here today. Really appreciate it. We love your ministry, love the partnership we've had. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Karen to kind of close us out. All right. Well, thank you audience for tuning in for today's episode of the Covenant Eyes podcast. We do love hearing from you. So please reach out to us, drop us a line. And until next time, God bless, take care, and we'll talk to you soon.